G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here and in today's video, I'm going to be clarifying my AFL ladder predictions video I made a couple of weeks back uh, with a tier maker video ranking the teams based on how poised they are for a premiership this season. Now, I copped a lot of criticism for that first ladder prediction video as I always do with ladder predictions videos because it seems like people just see that I rate their team low, lower than they expect and then they write some abuse. I'm sorry, Sydney fans. I know I rated Sydney bottom two. I don't know if I'll actually stick to that prediction yet, but it was good that you all let me know exactly how you felt about that. But in today's video, the point is I'm gonna be clarifying those predictions and trying to categorize teams. And I think going into the season, this is a much more accurate sort of way of projecting where teams are at. The, the actual final ladder is gonna be influenced so much by things like injuries and like nuances like the fixture. But um, at least if I can grade each team based on where I think they're going to be, what their goals are this season, I think this will be a much better reflection. So I'm using Tier Maker. As you can see on the screen here, I've got five tiers. They're gonna be genuine contenders, the teams that I think are gonna be the actual big dogs in the premiership race this year. The outside chances, so the guys that you think you know, might pinch a flag, but not necessarily in the uh, in the front running for it. Finals aspirants, these are the teams that I think will be happy to make finals. Uh, anything above that would be like extraordinary for them. Uh, no man's land sounds really harsh, but for me, it's just between finals and being a genuine rebuilding side. It's when you're going through that transition phase, and I'll clarify that when I actually start picking teams for them. And then finally, we've got the rebuilding section and it's nice and green because it doesn't mean that I hate these clubs or that they're shit. It just means they're going through a particular part of the premiership cycle right now. And, uh, you know, in the future, they'll be better. So um, just relax, Sydney fans. All right. Cool, guys. All right. So let's get into it. And I'm going to start by picking one club for every tier and then moving through it. So genuine contenders, obviously Richmond. We saw how good they were despite being hit by injuries last year. I don't want to repeat myself from the ladder predictions video, but even with Rants gone, I'm not concerned because of how well Grimes stood up. The outside chances are a side like the Bulldogs, who I think will probably nestle somewhere in that five to eight range. Um, and you know, them winning a flag isn't totally out of the question, but for me, they're certainly behind in the running uh, behind some of those other teams. Uh, a team that will be a finals aspirant will probably be someone like Hawthorne who uh, obviously missed the finals this year, probably a bit unlucky with Tom Mitchell going down. They obviously have concerns about how well they can sort of um, survive without him. I guess maybe they'll disagree with that, but I think it was a good year for them last year to sort of you know get more games into some of the younger guys, particularly James Warple. With Tom Mitchell back, I think they'll only improve. I think someone like Wingard's really finding his groove at Hawthorne. Long story short, I think they will probably, I'm, I'm very confident they'll make finals actually. In no man's land, I've got a few teams that are, you know, not really full, going the full hog and rebuilding, um, but they're not necessarily a finals contender either. I'm gonna say North Melbourne here. Uh, I could see them sliding into the bottom four here. And I'll clarify all this again. I'm gonna do one proper finals ladder, uh, final ladder prediction closer to the start of the season. But uh, for me, I think they, they kind of fall into that category. And uh, let's make this simple and put the Gold Coast Suns as rebuilding because frankly, let's face it, anything out of the bottom four this year would be ridiculous for them. So we've got our framework set up and uh, I'm gonna start going through the teams. All right, Adelaide are aside, I will probably, probably put in no man's land for now. I think there's still, they lost a lot of experience of these, still a bit of quality on the list to ensure that I don't think they'll go fully to the bottom of the ladder. But uh, I, I really can't see them pushing for finals with the amount of youth they brought in. I think they're gonna really try and fast track their development. Um, so I think they'll probably lose games as a result. Uh, let's just pick the Giants here. Clear, genuine contender this year. Made the grand final last year. The question mark is whether they respond to getting belted in the grand final as teams often don't, but looking at their list profile um, and talent, they're probably one or second on the list. Carlton, still rebuilding for mine. I know that sounds, I know people again in the comments weren't happy about how um, I rated them in my last video. I think I had them 16th. Um, whether or not they finish as low as 16th, I don't know, but for me, other than like Paddy Cripps, they still got so many young players they need to actually develop. You know, someone like a Sam Walsh won't necessarily play exactly as good or even improve on last year. They got young guys like Paddy Dow, Liam Stocker. All these guys really still need games into them um, and physical development as well. So even with Jack Martin going all right there, 
I still think they're around the mark for rebuilding. Geelong for me are an outside chance. I think this last year was the best, best chance to win it. And I still think they can win it. I think there's enough quality on the list. It's mature. But uh, obviously losing Tim Kelly and all those key players being a year older, I think it gets a little bit tough for them. So I'll be surprised if they're a genuine contender this year, but I'd be very surprised if they don't make finals as well. The Brisbane Lions for me, again, are an outside chance. Obviously uh, played an amazing season in 2019. Was that a little bit benefited by injury and fixture? I think undoubtedly, but they've obviously got a very quality list. Do not get me wrong. A lot of those young players still coming into their prime, which makes me think maybe one or two years before they're absolutely like actual top dogs. And I think this year they'll be around that five to eight mark personally. Call me biased. I'm going to say West Coast are still a genuine contender. I think uh, they put together a 15 and seven season last year, and I don't think they particularly ever got out of, you know, about third gear. Um, and with Tim Kelly coming into the side, I think there's so much upside there. Um, and there's still a lot of young guns coming through the list as well. I won't talk up my team too much longer, but uh, for me, I'll be very, very disappointed with anything other than a top four finish. In keeping with the WA theme, I'm gonna say Fremantle in no man's land. Uh, obviously, they're gonna be finals aspirants. All of these teams are finals aspirants in a sense, but realistically, I think with a new coach, a lot of new players, a new system in that midfield probably, because I've got a few different players to work with there. Um, it's gonna be a year of development, a lot of youth as well to get games into. I don't think they'll push as far up as you know past 10th, and that's why I think they're in no man's land, but they're probably also part, past the point where they're rebuilding, so a bottom four finish for them would be an absolute failure. Sydney Swans are rebuilding, uh, no surprise there. I just think I really, really do rate the quality of their list, and I do think this side probably will get close to winning a premiership one day. So don't get me wrong, I really don't hate Sydney. I think they're rebuilding because of how much youth they've put in over the last couple of years. You got you, even Heaney and Mills are still pretty young. You got Blakey, then some other guys as well like Florent and uh, and Haywood. These guys are all pretty young. They still need seasons to get into them. I do think I'll amend my bottom two prediction purely because I think any side with a fit Lance Franklin probably won't. Well, has no chance of finishing bottom two. That being said, I still think bottom six is on the cards for them, and I think a big focus will be getting youth, uh, getting games into the youth. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're still a rebuilding side. They are the sort of side that would prove me wrong on that score as well. Really successful, really proud club. Uh, but for me, still in that rebuilding phase. And just to clarify something as well, Sydney are in the rebuilding phase. I would rather be Sydney than any of North, Adelaide and Fremantle right now in terms of where their list talent is at. I think they're a lot closer to moving up than those teams, ironically, but um, I think they're just going to have a big year of just getting games into the youth. Collingwood, for me, are a genuine contender. I said it in the other video. I think they're absolutely primed. They've got some of the best talent in the league. Uh, Grundy's just signed on for seven years as of today at the time I'm recording this. So. Uh, can't imagine them falling out of um, contendership. And they were really only like, what, three points off making the grand final, so yeah. Essendon for me, stagnate and are a finals aspirants. I did have them missing the finals this year uh, in my prediction video. And I don't know if I, I, I probably still will hold to that for now. I'll see how we go with post of the preseason. Obviously got fitness concerns over there, but I don't think they're an outside chance. But Adelaide, I think are a finals aspirant to be honest, but. They're very, very close to being in no man's land, but they've been sort of rebuilding on the fly. And I think they've, what they're doing is fantastic. Obviously brought in seven top 25 picks. Again, I don't want to repeat myself, but I think uh, they've gotten pretty close to finals each year. I think this year, there's no reason why they can't go again for it. There's still a lot of mature talent on that list. St. Kilda, I'm sorry to say, still in no man's land. I still think they need more talent on that list. They, did a, they had a pretty sound off season Lost some players, but probably ended up as a net positive, adding a quite a few best 22 players. Uh, obviously, again, they're a final aspirant in, in a sense. So they'll be playing for finals. It's time for them to try and make finals. But I just think, again, with the new coach thing, they'll be in a similar spot to Fremantle, not quite good enough. And Melbourne, I've left to last because they're the bloody hardest team to peg for obvious reasons. I think I had them around the mark for finals, and that's why I'll say finals aspirant because they've proven the quality on the list right here and now is good enough. They've, In fact, they've added to it as well. Um, you know, with Stephen May joining the club, they added top two, top uh, top 11 picks, I think, after after the bids and stuff like that. So um, absolutely finals aspirants. I wouldn't put them any higher than that because of, you know, the things I've talked about before, psychological scarring and all of that. I'm not convinced yet. But uh, I certainly don't think they're in no man's land. And anything other than finals this year might, uh, probably will spill at the end for Goodwin. You probably need a new change 
um, a change of head coach if they don't make the finals this year. So there you go, guys. My genuine contenders are Richmond, GWS, West Coast, Collingwood, with outside chances to win the flag from the Bulldogs, Cats, and Lions. Hawthorne, Essendon, Power, and Melbourne all consider themselves a very good finals chance this year. Um, in no man's land, North, Adelaide, St. Kilda, and Fremantle continue to try and rebuild their list. And then you've got Carlton, the Gold Coast, and Sydney, who in earnest are really trying to push games into their youth. And again, I can see Adelaide and North probably being the closest two to dropping into that rebuilding phase. I'll have to reassess that as the season progresses. They, they're the question mark teams for me, whereas these bottom three teams, I'm more confident they're going to be blooding the youth. But anyway, guys, those are my predictions. And just remember, they are just that, predictions. So let's not take them too seriously. I'll do proper, a full ladder prediction closer to the season, as I've said before. But I felt like this was a really good sort of visual aid to sort of graph exactly where I think the teams are at in the competition right now. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Thank you.